All right, hi, this is Mike Nyack, and I'm here to talk today about lasers and laser resurfacing. Uh, very commonly, I'll have people come in asking about lasers and uh, asking for a specific laser. And I tell people that's kind of like going to a fancy restaurant and saying to the chef, I want you to use a Calphalon pan, or I want you to use another kind of nonstick pan. It actually has more to do with how the chef uses the pan than it does exactly what kind of pan they use if your food comes out at the right temperature or the right crusting and that kind of stuff. So um, these are three of our most commonly used lasers. We have a luminous ultra pulse. This is a CO2 laser. It can either be fractionated like a Fraxel laser, or it can be full field, continuous resurfacing like the old school flamethrower 1980s kind of lasers. Fairly versatile. The next one down is the mix to CO2 laser. Also it can be fractionated or full field. So you'd say, why do you have them both? Well, Different ones do different things. This one actually tends to be a little faster, and so we like it a lot, especially when patients are doing this under just light sedation or just topical anesthesia and not being put all the way to sleep. Um, but they actually have different kinds of physics, and so they work a little bit differently. The last one down there is actually a little bit of a sleeper. It's got six lasers in that box. That is a Cyton platform. It's got a resurfacing laser, which is the dual mode Erbium YAG resurfacing, and so that's a different kind of laser that is often thought of to be really, really gentle. That can be true and that can be not true, which I'll show you in a minute. It's also got lasers for brown spots and hair removal and theoretically skin tightening, although I don't think it works all that well. Um, and I'll show you what the difference is between a hair removal laser and a resurfacing laser, because very commonly people will expect that one laser can do pretty much any task, whether it's resurfacing or blood vessels or hair removal. So I'll show you a little bit of the differences physics-wise. So on the sheet behind me, what I've done is taken these various lasers and actually treated the piece of paper um, on different settings so that you can see that it's not just the laser, it's how you use it, what kinds of settings you do that control what, what happens. So the first column here I have is the Cyton Erbium laser and often that can be misconceived as a very gentle laser. A lot of times people will say, well I've read about the Erbium laser and it's not effective enough. It's not, it do, it's not heavy enough to do the job. And at very light settings, <clears throat> this kind of setting is the kind of setting that when we resurface skin, it's evaporating old dead skin cells on the surface layer and would heal within a span of three or four days. Um, done wide awake, not super painful, it's kind of hot and stingy, light refreshing, the finest of wrinkles, the finest of brown spots, just a nice dewy skin. Well, that can actually be duplicated with one of the fractionated CO2s and even the other, the hotter fractionated CO2. If you really look, this hotter fractionated CO2, the, the heavier duty one, hasn't burned the paper quite as much as this one because of how the physics are, <clears throat> because of how it delivers the energy. Anyway, a couple day recovery in that span, but they can all accomplish a similar level of injury. As we take that laser that's thought of as one of the milder lasers and turn up its energy, we can actually get so heavy that it's heavier than some of these other lasers that are thought of as, as the heavy duty, the big guns. But again, same thing that be done with this. So between this setting and this setting, all we've done is turned up the density, made it so that we're still treated in a fractionated way. I don't know if you can zoom in, you see the little dots on there? So it's still treating in a fractionated way, but the dots are much closer together and even closer together still. And that re resurfaces a greater proportion of the skin surface, and therefore it's, it's a longer recovery, but it's a more impressive result. Similarly with the Ultra Pulse, we can take the dots and get them closer together and higher intensity, more resurfacing, more improvement, better result, longer recovery. And here, we've actually skipped the spaces between the dots altogether. We've gotten to the point here where the dots are actually touching one another within this within these blocks and so there's no areas skipped. This heals the slowest because the skip areas allow for healing to come in from the edges whereas on the area where it's treated entirely together only from the bottom can you heal. Um, this is an example of turning the energies up really high and that can be achieved with a couple of these lasers. When you turn these energies up really high it actually goes all the way through and burns the, burns the paper, so to speak, and in your, this case it would be your skin. And this is another thing that I like to point out to people, is that it's more than, again, just the laser and what settings do you put on, it's what kind of care do you put into it, can you assess the result while you're doing it. 
and do you know with your particular frying pan how to avoid burning the dish so that you don't ruin it. So that's another important distinction between practices and practitioners is they can have what they consider the best laser in the world, but if they don't know what they're doing with it, they may get not the right result over promise, overly harsh result, scar, it's, it's all independent. It's all dependent on settings in that particular person's skin type and good clinical judgment. The last one I'm going to show you is a hair removal laser. So hair removal works very differently. It doesn't burn off the outer layers. It burns pigment. It gets absorbed by the pigment in the hair follicle. And I think you can kind of get a sense here how the paper itself is almost not burned. This first spot when I was testing this, I had it set too high. And you can see that I've burned the paper here. That would be the equivalent of a laser hair removal burn. Um, obviously we don't treat paper very often, so that's why my test spot was a little hot. These spots are cleaner. That's more like what we're trying to actually accomplish when we're getting rid of hair and not burning the skin surrounding it. So you can see the pigment's been vaporized and the paper is intact, unlike these settings where the paper is actually burned right through. Another test spot's down here. So that's a brief introduction to laser skin resurfacing in fractionated, gentle, heavy, and too heavy ways, and uh, how laser hair removal is different. It doesn't destroy the skin, doesn't resurf the skin, it strictly goes after pigment, which is concentrated in the hair follicles. That's why dark, coarse hairs with lots of pigment respond well, especially if they're on a fair skin background. Thank you so much for listening.